it's your girl Lori J coming back to you with another 38 and dating podcast well we are on episode eight y'all I'm so ecstatic that you guys have been listening you've been sending your comments I've gotten dms text messages emails it's been awesome so thank you thank you thank you please tell your friends about it share it with them if you think it's good um I'm new to this so I really appreciate all of your support it means the world to me and please 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 uh rate and subscribe and uh write a review if you feel the urge that would be amazing I'm on Apple iTunes podcasts and Castbox, Spotify anywhere you can get it Google Play Music etc so just share the love and I appreciate all the love you guys have given me anyway on to tonight's episode <laughs> tonight's episode is called what I wish I knew at 28 that I now know at 38 <laughs> That is a huge topic. I was actually referencing that all day today. Like, God, somebody should have told me this when I was in my 20s or even my early 30s. Like, there is so much out there that people don't really talk about. Um, And I said it today in reference to something particular. Um, I said it about egg freezing. And I did a webinar on egg freezing. For those that don't know, that's about fertility and reproductive health and preserving those eggs. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because some people are like, get those eggs crack, girl. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, 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 when the time is right. Um, anyway, but just so you know what I was referencing specifically, when you do egg freezing, this is what I learned today on the webinar, whatever age you freeze your eggs at is the age that egg will be whenever you decide to use it. So if you're 32 and you freeze your eggs at 32, you will have these good old healthy scrong eggs, right? Um, Even if you use them when you're 42, okay? So you wait till you're 38, 39, 40, then your eggs going to be 38, 39, 40 year old eggs. Good thing about that is those are still healthy, viable eggs. Um, There is still a high likelihood of being able to uh, retrieve eggs at that age. I mean, it was a phenomenal and very insightful webinar. And I did it at the... um, not the urging of my friend, but I had a friend who went through that and I've heard my leak teal, uh, an amazing podcaster and blogger talk about her process with it. And so I've always been curious and I did the webinar. It was fantastic. And I was just like, wow, why didn't I think about this at 32? Well, at 32, you're thinking about having fun, dating, kicking it, going on trips, getting drunk, for those of us who drink, um, and just living life. And you're like, oh, I'll meet my person probably in the next year or two, whatever, three years, fine. But then all of a sudden you get to 38 and you're like, damn it, (laughs) I need to start thinking about some options if I want to have kids. Um, And I haven't um, yet met the person, for those of you out there who are in that scenario. Um, anyway, so I thought it was very insightful and I feel strongly after having heard that webinar that people should be talking about this and encouraging younger women to think about it. Not saying you have to do it, but it's something interesting to think about if you are, um, looking to have kids one day and you're not ready now. I mean, whether you're with somebody you love or not, whether you're even married or not, if you just want to have an insurance policy and you can afford it. It makes sense to do it on the earlier side because your body will continue to grow older no matter what. And you don't get to have a say in that. And what's interesting about that is um, I was also interested in it because um, I saw Aisha Tyler break down on national TV when she talked about how she always thought she could have a career and have kids later and at 40 and I'm not sure if she tried before 40 but at 40 she tried to have kids with her either husband or partner and it proved to be futile and impossible and it was so heartbreaking to watch her break down and she said you know nobody ever says you can't have your career and have kids and have it all you know I just assumed that when I was ready that I would just go down the path and have kids but she was never able to get pregnant not naturally not with IVF she tried a whole lot of um, options and I think the doctors deemed it highly unlikely and she was very heartbroken by it And I get it. And it's interesting because guys don't really have to think about that so much. 
uh, because, you know, they can have kids until they're 70. Yeah, look at y'all. Um, and you know what's funny? I never thought about having kids as a younger person. Um, it just wasn't on my list of things that I was interested in at that time. Um, but when you think about do I ultimately, before I leave this earth, want to have a biological child of my own? And, you know, assuming that you meet the person that you want to be with, the person that you want to reproduce with, do I want to have that option? And that's what changed it for me. Do I want to have the option to have a biological child um, and see what that child looks like, who that child is with my DNA and his DNA? And if that's something that's even remotely on your mind, I would highly recommend you to find a webinar about egg freezing and see if it's something that you're interested in. That's my PSA on that. Anyway, what I wish I knew at 28 that I now know at 38, deal breakers, discussing the relationship, and big decisions. That's what we're going to talk about in detail. So it was interesting because I was struggling to find a great topic for tonight. And you guys tell me what you think about this topic once you're done with the podcast. But I want to talk about deal breakers. So at 28, I had no deal breakers. Not really. I mean, at 28, you're just looking to find someone you enjoy kicking it with, somebody that, you know, you're having fun with. I mean, you know, 28 was like, I think 27 was the best year of my life. I just felt I was in my prime. I was over the hump of 25 so I could rent a car. <laughs> I don't know why I even cared about that. It was just that last age where people could tell you no. Um, so I could rent a car at 25. Uh, but 27 was a fantastic, phenomenal, like, you know, orgasmic year. And I don't mean that t- seriously in terms of I was having multiple orgasms. But <laughs> I mean, it was just the prime. It's like I wasn't too close to 30. I was away from 21. So I wasn't too, super young. And I was away from 25. Uh, it was just a great year. But anyway, at 28, um, I was just focused on having a good time. And I was in my 10 year relationship at that time because I started that at 22, if you remember. And I was in that relationship until I was 32. But I was still having the time of my life. Um, I think probably by 28, I realized some of the deal breakers that I had. Um, and the first one is that I know people say this, but y'all, please hear me. Please hear me. Everybody says opposites attract. I get it. I've been watching Being Serena on HBO. Fantastic series. If you've not seen it, it's only five episodes. Each one is like 20 something minutes long. Amazing. Like you really have to watch it if you're interested at all about a woman being successful, being on top, trying to be married, have a child and still be successful after you do all those things. Fantastic. It's more about that than it is about her specific career. Anyway, but you get to see your play tennis and and go through all that, too, and what it takes to be successful. So she and her husband are opposites. Serena and her husband, Alexis, are opposites. And, you know, she talks about it. And it works for them. And I think there's a scenario in which it'll work for someone else. However, a lot of times there is such a thing as two opposite. And two opposite does not work. That's my first deal breaker. Um, You know, my ex of 10 years and I, we were very opposite. I think he would tell you that to this day. (laughs) We were great friends, but we were very opposite. Um, The things he liked to do, I didn't particularly like. The things I liked to do, he didn't particularly like. And I just didn't think about it because I was 22 when I started dating him and he was 28. So that wasn't really a big consideration or a deal breaker at that time. But as we grew on in the relationship and I discovered myself and what I liked more and he discovered himself, like he would want to go to certain things like, you know, I don't know, Dragon Con and things like that. And I would happily go just because it would be in support of him. But we didn't really like it. I mean, I didn't really like it. I, sh- I shouldn't say we. I didn't really like it. So he would often not ask me to go. Um which I appreciate it. <laughs> and I don't mind stuff like that, but that's just one small example of some of the things that we differed on. Um, you got to like people in the same way or dislike people in the same way. I've met introverts who've been in relationships together and they both both dislike people in the same way and it worked for them. It's like, eh, I don't want to bring anybody over the house. I eh, don't want to go out with any friends. Me either. Okay. And that works. But if one of you guys is gregarious, outgoing, and loves being around people, and the other one absolutely does not, that don't work. 
it does not work y'all I'm letting you know right now <laughs> so that same ex and I like we would you know uh, have to do family things together and mostly my family uh, he wasn't particularly close to his family and um, you know after a while he was kind of like Ugh, do I have to go down to where your grandparents live and visit them such a long drive Ugh, do we have to be around people all weekend and what's funny is actually on the first outing that we did going to a basketball game I should have known then see what did I tell y'all when people show you who they are believe them this is more comical than anything um it's not a judgment on his character by any means but it's funny because he revealed himself then so on our first outing way back when um we went to a basketball game an Atlanta Hawks game and he asked me do you like basketball I'm like sure it's cool I didn't have anything to do, and he offered for me to go. And so he had these amazing floor seats, um, literally right on the floor. And so we went, and um, he had two extra tickets. He said, oh, you can give them to your brother, and he can bring a date. So I gave them to my brother, and he was going to bring a date, but the girl copped out, and he brought my mother. So this is, like, first time going out <laughs> with this guy. And I got my brother and my mother. <laughs> that was not by design. So we go to the Hawks game. Uh, my ex was in a trench coat and a three-piece suit. He was an attorney. And um, we get there, and we sit down in our seats. And I told him my brother and my mom were coming. So he turns to me, and he says, am I going to have to talk to them? <laughs> and I was like, no, nope. you can do whatever you want to do. Because at this point, I definitely was not looking at us as potentially dating. I was like, I'd had two lunches with him and I was like mm, no we are way too opposite he does not believe in Christmas I like Santa Claus if I ever have kids they're gonna believe in Santa Claus <laughs> so I totally knew that there were deal breakers in the lunches like little things like that that I was like eh, not gonna happen so this was like a risk-free non-romantic outing and when he said that I was like you don't have to do a damn thing you can do what you want to do and then when my brother and my mother get there, he actually talks their heads off and talks to them the whole time. So that was funny. But still, he said it. So you've got to like people the same, okay? And if one of you is hella close to your family and the other one is absolutely not, that's also a challenge, y'all. You might not realize it, you know, at 22, 25, 28. But as you get older, you start to understand where people place their value on family or not. And you have to understand that and... Find out if you guys are compatible in the same way. Like if you come from a big family and you guys are super close and your person comes from a family that's absolutely disconnected and don't like each other, that has had some impact on that person. You've got to know that. It has. It might not manifest. Maybe it manifests in the opposite way where they actually love big families. Who knows? But it's going to have an impact. And you got to figure out if it's a good impact for your relationship or not or potential relationship. Um, I've dated people who were not particularly close to their family. Um, the one guy, the, the cater waiter guy, he was not particularly close to his mother. There was a history of abuse there, which I found out later. I mean, and for a mother to, like, abuse her child, I think it was more physical than anything. But still, I mean, that has an impact, y'all. Um, and I didn't know that until much later um so those are things that you probably want to suss out um early on and when I say much later we only dated for six months but it was after I agreed to date him um but suss those things out early y'all just kind of probe and ask how they are with their family are you close to your siblings do you have siblings are you close to your parents are you not and I'm not saying one way is good and one way is bad. What I'm saying is y'all need to be compatible in that way. Perhaps both of you have disconnected families and you bond over that. Um, perhaps both of you have loving families and you bond over that. I don't know. But all I know is that part needs to be compatible because it will play into how you guys interact with each other's families if you get to that point. Um, and also, let's say you guys decide to have a family together. It'll impact that so think about how they are with their family and whether you're compatible with them in that way because god forbid i don't want anybody to uh be with me and be around the holidays and be like i don't want to do anything i don't want to go visit your family or they don't want to go visit their family i would be burnt i would be like hot like really like if y'all don't know christmas is my jam i love christmas i love white lights they're so romantic i love 
Christmas music. I love everything about Christmas. Um, And so if somebody did not enjoy it particularly, and I've been with people who have not, not many, just one person, (laughs) one person who did not. And, um, And that isn't their thing and that's your thing. It will suck because you have to be all happy and joyous by yourself. And it's only more fun to be happy and joyous with your person. Because you know what? After a while, I started just leaving folks behind. Like, okay, you don't like Christmas. You don't like all this stuff. Bye. (laughs) You can go enjoy what you need to enjoy on your own. Um, I got to a point where I realized, okay, you don't have to like what I like, but I'm going to enjoy what I like. How about that? And that can create a big disconnect, y'all. I didn't realize that when I was younger. I know it now. Because what will happen is you'll go off and do your thing and be happy and that person will be doing whatever they do and happy. But y'all won't be sharing that. You won't be growing together. You won't be able to bask in the same kind of fun together. And that's my next point, y'all. Another thing about opposites, like two opposites don't attract, two meaning T-O-O, not T-W-O. People that are way too opposite don't attract. Y'all got to like the same kind of fun. I know it sounds crazy. People are like, oh, we don't have to like the same things. You can have your independent interests. Yeah, cool. I'm all for that. But if you guys absolutely do not like the same kind of fun at all, that's a deal breaker. It was for me. I'm not saying it has to be for you. What I'm saying is what I wish I had known then that I know now is pay attention to whether you guys have the same type of fun or like the same type of fun. You like to go to live concerts and he or she likes to go to, um, you know, I don't know. God, I'm trying to think of something. Uh, Plays or um, Comic-Con or whatever. If you guys both like being out and about with a lot of people and having fun, great. But if one of you loves it and the other one hates it, how are you guys going to go out? How are you going to have date night? What are you going to do? Be cooped up in the house together all the time? Or one person's always going to have to bend to the other person and that will suck. Nobody always wants to bend to somebody else's will, you know, like even if you're the most compatible person in the world and believe me, you, I'm an Aquarius. I am one of the most compatible signs and compatible people in the world. I am a happy go lucky, you know, go along with the flow. Ask my girl Shauna. She's like, dang, you are the most like easygoing, go with the flow type person. I can ask you to be you know, to jump off a bridge. Not really. She can't. But I can ask you to do do something wild and crazy and you'll be like, okay. And that's just who I am because I'm always open to new experiences. But even still, if you're with somebody and y'all don't like the same kinds of fun, at least in some regard, y'all will not have anything to do together. And it'll be a constant bane of your existence. It'll be a constant source of pain. I went out to the clubs when I was younger, you know, hey, party. And my dude would be over in the corner sleep at a table. And one of my girlfriends said to me, she said, oh, he can't keep up with you. That's not going to work. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's fine. He's doing him. Yeah. <laughs> and I truly believe that. Um, but it was too opposite, y'all. We were way too opposite. Uh, I had people. Oh, here's the other one. When people frequently tell you that y'all are too opposite and it won't work, listen to them. At least consider it. I had so many people tell me in different ways with different people, to be honest. Oh, mm -mm, that's not going to (laughs) work. I mean, you know, like, it's just funny because I'm always like, no, I can make a decision for myself. I'm an independent woman. I-N-D-E-P-E-N. You know, I got my little boosie on. Um, And I'm not saying believe everybody, y'all. But what I'm saying is listen and consider. Okay? Listen and consider. And the last thing is you got to be compatible with how you guys value money. So uh, the 47-year-old guy that I dated, uh, we went um, to this venue one time and we were eating breakfast. And he put me on the phone with his friend who lived in, where did he live? Dubai. And (laughs) his friend was like, "Woo, nice to meet you, Lori. He's like, oh, the fact that he's taking you to this place um, and I know that place is expensive. That means he really likes you. 
Now, mind you, this was um, somebody I was in a relationship with for nine months and he was 47 and, you know, we were still getting to know each other, all that stuff. Anyway, so he said he must really like you. He's like, because he looks at $2 as if it's $200. So the fact that he's spending money on you is a big deal. Now, mind you, <laughs> I actually treated at that place, right? Because I'm not opposed to treating and, and paying for things, you know, when it's, when it's appropriate. I don't think it should always be one-sided the whole time, especially when you're in a relationship. Um, so anyway, when he said that, I just kind of laughed it off. But you know what, y'all? Later on, money became a thing. It was a thing, y'all. And I would assume that somebody that's 47, well-established in their life and career, would be okay with spending their own money to their comfort level. But what's weird is this dude, this fool, would, we would go on vacation, right? And we only went on two. We go on vacation, and at the end of the vacation, he'd write me a check for the amount because, you know, when you're booking stuff, you just have to book it in. And this fool would be like, I didn't want to spend that money. Well, then, bruh, don't spend it. I didn't put a gun to your head, Lori Hall. <laughs> Let me, I'm getting my indignant voice, y'all. I'm sorry. Let me bring it back. Lori is fine and happy to go on solo vacations. I love them. They are my jam. They are wonderful. Times of reflection and fun all on your own because I love me. Um, but I ain't put a gun to your head. And I think it was more so about money. And I think he had money challenges or issues. But he also was obsessive about money. Um, and not in a good way. Always trying to get like the next come up on money by investing in these um, investing schemes and things like that. And I didn't think there were schemes at first, but I mean, it was always, oh, this deal's going to close tomorrow. Oh, this deal's going to close tomorrow. He'll be saying that for three months. And I got so tired of it. I was like, mm, bruh, whatever. You know, like I just got annoyed after a while. Like, okay. And that's all he would talk about, all he would obsess about. And I was like, okay, done. So be compatible about how you view money and spending your own money. I'm not saying that, you know, you guys need to merge accounts. Definitely not. Uh, definitely not saying that. Not as a dating couple. Anyway, but um, you want to make sure that if he's cheap, then you're cheap too. <laughs> oh, or if you're cool spending money when it comes to doing nice things or going out or taking each other out, then do that. But you definitely don't want to be with a cheap, broke dude or you know cheap and broke is different let me let me address that real quick because my brother hounded me like oh you know I hate it when girls say dude is cheap or broke and blah blah blah, blah. okay a cheap guy is somebody who has money but never wants to spend it they're miserly okay they they are cheap they only want to spend the bottom penny on something but they have money but they just want to obsessively hold on to it Okay, a broke dude is somebody who just doesn't have money right now. And that's not a bad thing. You know, if somebody is broke and they are striving to get to a better place, that's a OK in my book. I mean, you have to decide for yourself. If that's a deal breaker. But when they have money, they view money like you do or they they're OK with spending it on certain things, etc. That's different. That just means you're broke for the moment. Cheap is a lifestyle and a mentality. Broke is temporary. Okay, so that's the difference. If somebody's broke, there is somebody who's willing to rock with you while you're broke if they really care about you because they know that you have potential to get to another place. I have dated plenty of broke dudes. Oh, 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 I've dated so many <laughs> broke dudes. <laughs> it cracks me up now because I'm like, dang, girl, you did date a lot of broke dudes. Um, but you know what? I was looking at the heart of the person and the character of the person. And I tried to overcome it. Now, some of them were so broke that they would never bounce back. And I had to realize that, too. I was like, dang, bro, like you're like too old to be this broke. And that was a deal breaker for me, to be honest. And I have no shame in my game. In the show, Love Is on Own, she's like, if I'm working hard, the main character, Nuri, she's like, if I'm working hard, why is it bad for me to ask that her brother's doing the same and being successful at it? And I agree with her. There gets to be an age where you're, you're too old to be broke still for no reason. If you're broke because you have taken out your 401k and you're putting it towards your business or your dreams, that's not a bad thing. That's not too old to be broke. That is investing in your future. But if you are just broke because you don't know how to manage money and you don't know how to, um, you know, take care of your business and your bills, 
and you have no way to get there, that's when you too old to be broke. All right, so those are deal breakers, y'all. Um, the next thing is religion. And I know it's a dicey subject, but you want to make sure that you guys have universal beliefs that are similar. So you don't have to both be super Christian or both be atheists, hardcore. I mean, it, it helps if you're similar, right? It helps if you're equally yoked. But, you know, for me, if you believe in God, that's somebody has to believe in God for me. Um, did they have to go to church every Sunday? No, there was a time where I thought they did, but I actually don't go every Sunday. Just letting y'all know. Um, but I enjoy church and I'm not, um, embarrassed about it and I'm not going to deny it. And I like listening to the word when I can. Um, and another church has flaws and that's okay, but I do need somebody that actually believes in God and the goodness of God. And that's for Lori. You have to decide what your beliefs are and just make sure that it's compatible with your person. You don't want to be too opposite on that. Um, and the last thing is checking for your family. If a dude is interested in dating you seriously, he will start asking you questions about your family, your life, your middle name, your birthday, things like that. If he's not asking any of those questions, y'all, he is not checking for you, boo. And you shouldn't be checking for him, honestly, if you want something more. Now, if you just want a casual thing, go for it. Do you. Have fun. But if he wants um, to be serious, he will ask those types of questions because he wants to get to know you. That's an important thing that I didn't realize when I was younger is I have to realize when somebody truly wants to get to know me versus just kicking it with me. And y'all know what that is. Y'all know. When somebody just wants to hang out and they really don't call in advance, they just want to kick it with you. But when they plan something in advance for you and they ask you questions about your life and they remember things that you've told them before... That person's probably wanting to seriously date you at some point. And that's what you need to look for if that's what you want to. All right, moving on. Discussing the relationship. All right. I know it's always awkward, but it must be done if you want to be in a relationship. At 28, I didn't really think about that. I just went along with the flow. I was a passenger, not a co-pilot. And I just kind of let things fall where they may. But you do that enough times and you'll let time pass on and then all of a sudden you're looking around like well what happened why did I not find someone who was serious about me like I wanted to be serious about somebody and it comes from being a little too casual if you know that you want to be in a relationship now if you don't then more power to you don't worry about this advice because this is not for you um keep doing what you're doing because it's cool and you like it right but if you actually want to be in a relationship or be with somebody seriously you got to discuss the relationship, DTR. And ideally, from my perspective, he initiates, right? The guy initiates. Um, and same-sex couples, I'm sorry, I'm using he and she a lot, but, like, I'm just speaking from my own experience, but adapt it to you. Okay. Um, but if they don't, you've got to do it. And my sister was amazing at doing this. Uh, her husband now, before he was her boyfriend, you know, she really wanted to be with him. And she took it upon herself to tell him because uh, he didn't make mention of it. And she she knew he liked her, but, you know, they hadn't talked about it. And so she talked with him about it. And he said, sorry, but I'm moving to Africa. They lived in Madrid um, and they were friends first. And so he said, sorry, I'm moving to Africa and I don't think it's good to start a relationship. And she was heartbroken and he left. And on a trip back to Madrid, they met up and he's like, hey, are you dating anybody? And she's like, you know, you kind of hurt my feelings when I told you I wanted to date you seriously and be with you. And so, no, I haven't started dating anybody because I'm still thinking about that and so he's like good let's do it <laughs> so they ended up being together and that was great that she took the initiative so I don't care who takes the initiative but it must be discussed if you really want to be with somebody don't sit silent don't wait around if that other person's not bringing it up you bring it up if you really want it don't wait life's too short and if they're into you they will show it if you bring up the relationship and the other person stalls, they ain't checking for you. If they're unsure, they ain't really checking for you. Somebody somebody said, and I don't know who came up with this quote, but it doesn't take all day to recognize sunshine. That is so true, y'all. Y'all need to know. 
All right. And I know I got to wrap it up soon. So I'm just going to move on to big decisions, whether to move in together. Here's my thought on that. Moving in together is a big deal. It's a big decision. And I have lived with somebody before for nine years. And while it was a good living situation, it did not do anything for the relationship per se. So don't look at moving in together as a way to um, make your relationship better. Second thing is, I personally would not probably live with somebody else again, because when you are with somebody, you should be with them because you want to be. And when you end up moving in together, sometimes you stay in the relationship past its expiration date because it's too hard to move out. You have to find a new place to live. You figure out who's getting what furniture, who's getting the dog. When you are living together, you are creating a marital type situation without the commitment. Right. One time my dad said, uh, you have a living arrangement, not a commitment <laughs> when you're living with somebody. And that's true. It's not a commitment. A commitment is I want to spend the rest of my life with you. A commitment is let's get engaged and let's get married. A commitment is let's be partners. A commitment is let's build a future together. A commitment is not just moving in together. Okay, So I think that you have to have the conversations about your relationship and what the goal is for your relationship before you decide to move in together. And just know that if you guys break up, it's like a divorce. It really is. You have to separate your livelihood, you have to separate your assets, your things that you've bought, you have to separate a lot of things. And it gets really hard to try to both break up and move out at the same time, because it prolongs the timeline for you. Not only do you want to break up with somebody, but you got to wait until you find somewhere else to live and get utilities and hopefully your credit's good and all this other stuff. It just creates a lot of challenges that I think are unnecessary for a relationship when you should be focusing on the relationship growing. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying just think about all of the factors and there are just some risks in it and just know that the main thing should be your relationship and how you guys are building together. All right. That's it for this 38 and Dating, y'all. Have fun. Let me know what you think. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.